What's up guys, my name is Tony, and today I'm going to give you a quick and painless guide on NixOS Home Manager. Home Manager is a powerful tool that allows you to set up your user's environment in a Nix-style declarative way. This is great because you can control your dot files within a config file, which will extend the reproducibility aspect of NixOS to your dot files. We're going to go over how to install and configure Home Manager with various config files. At the end of this guide, you'll be able to install Home Manager on your own system and start managing your dot files the Nix way. We're going to start off today where we left off in part 1, which is a semi-fresh NixOS install with Qtile and an Alacrity setup. If you haven't watched part 1, don't worry, you can follow this guide at your own pace and it will be sufficient for any generic semi-fresh NixOS installation. I encourage you to check out part 1 because that's going to go over a large portion of the NixOS philosophy and how to configure your NixOS environment with the configuration.nix file. The first step is to install Home Manager. There are a few ways to do this, but we're going to install it as a module directly into our configuration.nix file so that we can reproduce our system with Home Manager automatically installed into it. So in order to do that, we need to add a few lines to our NixOS configuration file. So let's open up a terminal here with super enter and let's type sudo vim etsy nixos configuration.nix. And I'm not going to go into extreme detail on the Vim commands today because this is more of a NixOS home manager video and I believe Vim is out of scope for this. So if you're somebody who's not comfortable using Vim or Emacs or what have you, you can always open this file in whatever text editor of your choice, such as VS Code or Gedit or what have you. So to install home manager, let's go ahead and define a variable in our NixOS configuration file. Just before the imports block, we're going to go ahead and type let. We're going to define home manager to equal builtins.fetch tarball. And we're going to fetch https slash github.com slash nix community home manager archive release. And we're going to use 24.11.tar.gz. And on the next line, we'll type in. Now, this is the syntax to declare variables so that they can be used in the next block. Now that that variable has been defined, let's go ahead and include it in our imports list. We're going to type parentheses import. We'll start a string here, dollar sign curly brace, home manager, which is the name of our home manager variable, slash nixos. Close that out. Now we have imported our home manager variable into our imports block. This way, Home Manager will be installed when we run NixOS Rebuild Switch or NixOS Install. Now, this method works well for now, but it's not ideal for long term because we're importing Home Manager using Fetch Tarball. We're pinning it to a specific version manually. This means that every time we want to upgrade Home Manager, we're going to need to update our configuration.nix and manually change this 24.11 to whatever version we need at that time. A solution to this problem is to utilize an experimental NixOS feature called Flakes, which allows proper version locking and really handles version control in a better way. And we're going to go over Flakes in a part 3 of this guide, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and you will see the Flakes guide in the near future. Now let's go ahead and configure some home manager options in order to get things working properly. So we'll type home manager dot use user packages, we'll set that to true, and we'll also set use global packages to true and we will declare backup file extension to equal backup and this will prevent home manager from failing in the event of a config file that already exists trying to be overwritten by your home manager config so this will tell home manager to convert the duplicate config file to a backup file and lastly let's specify that our home.nix file needs to be imported by doing home manager .users .tony equals import dot slash home.nix. Now we need to actually create this home.nix file, but for now this line will import that home.nix file into our configuration file. All right, let's go ahead and save this and quit out of it. And let's create that home.nix file by typing sudo vim etsy nixos home.nix. In this home.nix file, let's start off by adding a few parameters. So we'll type config packages and dot 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 to cover additional potential parameters. And we'll end this with a colon. And let's create a simple block here. Let's define home.username to be equal to Tony. And home.home directory equals slash home slash Tony. And of course you're gonna replace Tony with whatever your username is. 
And let's define our version here to be home.state version equal to 24.11. That is our home manager version that we did install. And to demonstrate what we can do with this home.nix file, let's configure our bash a little bit here. So first of all, we can type programs.bash equals this set here. And we're gonna enable it by typing enable equals true. And let's create a bash alias with the syntax of shell aliases equals, and in this list we can create our bash aliases. So let's create one that simply prints something to the terminal just for demonstrative purposes. And let's call it btw and we'll make that equal to echo. I use nixos, by the way, that should be easy enough to demonstrate. Let's close out that, close out that, and close out that. Now, this is a very, very basic home.nix file, and we're gonna install Home Manager first with a very basic shell alias of btw. And we're gonna look for syntax on how to add a lot of those options today by using mynixos.com. And we can just do something as simple as search Home Manager and then the name of the program. So we searched Home Manager Bash here, and we have this shell aliases attribute. Now in this example, it shows the syntax of how to set the alias. So we can do just that using our shell aliases attribute here. All right, let's go ahead and save, quit that file. And we're finally ready to install Home Manager. We can do that by typing sudo nixos rebuild switch. All right, now that that's complete, let's clear the terminal. Let's reopen a new terminal here and test to see if that worked by typing btw. And there we go. We have I use nixos, by the way, as an alias. And that tells us that our Home Manager is definitely working. Beautiful. So that's great, but let's move on to something that's useful. Instead of just a print alias here. Let's go ahead and open that home.nix file again by typing sudo vim etsy nixos home.nix. Now, underneath the programs.bash block, we can actually add a specific block to install a specific program to our Tony user. And we can do that by typing home.packages equals with packages semicolon. And right in this list, let's just add bat and we can close that list out. Now, bat is a program that is similar to cat, which just prints the contents of a file to the terminal, but bat is more customizable and has stuff like line numbers and syntax highlighting. And while we're here, let's add a useful alias to rebuild our NixOS, and let's call it nrs, which is shorthand for NixOS rebuild switch, and let's set that alias to sudo NixOS rebuild switch. Save that. And one more thing we want to do is customize our bash prompt. And for that, I like to use a website called bashpromptgenerator.org. I've probably been using this website for 10 years. And this allows us to customize a bash prompt and then paste that into our bash RC. But instead of our bash RC today, we're using Home Manager. So I want to show you guys how to set up the bash prompt within Home Manager. So for me, I like to put my username in there. And you can change the color of that by clicking this foreground color. And I'll set that to green here. And I'll add a space here. And I like to type the words in. So we'll click that and we'll type in, add another space. And let's specify that this is gonna be in our working directory. And I'll change the color of that to be blue. Add one more space here and add a dollar sign and a space. This gives me this very complicated looking PS1 string. So I'll go ahead and copy that. And in our NixOS home.nix file, we can add a new line called init extra. And in this init extra string, we can type export and we can paste that PS1 string and there we go. What that's gonna do is tell Bash to set the prompt to this PS1 variable. And this is just like adding export PS1 to whatever in your Bash RC file. And again, I didn't memorize this. All I did was search for home manager bash at mynixos.com and I found this init extra attribute. And this is just an attribute that allows you to specify any extra commands that should be run when initializing an interactive shell. All right. So we added an alias, we added a bash prompt, and we added a program. So let's go ahead and save and quit that file. And that alias is not active yet. Let's go ahead and rebuild our nixos by typing sudo NixOS rebuild switch. All right, you quit that, open up a new terminal, and there you go. You already see the prompt is working correctly. We have that Tony in home syntax, and we can test the program that we installed by typing bat etsy 
NixOS home.nix. There we go. We have access to bat. All right, let's move on to the next step. So this is great, but we can do a lot more. We can actually declare our alacrity config within Home Manager. And there are a couple ways to do this, but a lot of programs just have NixOS Home Manager syntax we can use to declare options. In this case, Home Manager will convert JSON into TOML. So we can just enter our alacrity config as JSON in here. So let's open up our home.nix file again here. And let's add a block for alacrity here programs.alacrity equals, close that out. Let's enable equals true. So we're gonna enable it. For the settings, we will add the following options. Now this is what our current alacrity config settings are. It's just setting the opacity and setting the font. So we're gonna tell NixOS Home Manager to generate this file declaratively. And to do so, we'll just type window.opacity equals 0.9 and font.normal equals family jet brains mono and style regular we'll close that out and let's make the font a little bit bigger here font dot size equals 16. now we've got our programs dot alacrity block here and as i said this is going to convert this json into something like this which is our alacrity dot config file that we made in the part one of this tutorial and since this file already exists, we should expect this file to be converted into a backup file since we specified that's how duplicates will be handled in our NixOS configuration file. And once again, I found syntax for this settings attribute using mynixos.com and searching home manager alacrity. So let's save and quit this file. And now that we have access to that alias to rebuild NixOS, we can just type NRS for NixOS rebuild switch. And there we go. Open up a new terminal in Alacrity. Let's confirm this worked here. Let's type bat.config alacrity, alacrity.toml. And there you go. That's our new Alacrity config file that was generated by Home Manager. And we know that's new because we added that size there. That size wasn't in our original file. Now we can get the contents of our original file here by typing bat config alacrity, alacrity.toml.backup. And there we go, we see that's the old file. And from now on, we can just manage our alacrity config file in our home.nix file. So hopefully you're starting to see the power of this. We can move on to the next step. So that is what I consider to be the most convenient way of tweaking a config file in Home Manager. But there are a couple other ways to do so. And let's explore one of those ways here. Let's open our home.nix file once again and show you another way to manage a config file. So this next method is just literally pasting a complete string of the file into home manager. So I don't prefer this method at all because I don't see this as helpful. I see it as adding more complexity to the situation. But in some cases when the config file is very, very short, I would see this as acceptable or helpful. Let's demonstrate this with the configuration of bat. So we're gonna type home.file dot string dot config slash bat slash config dot text we're going to make that equal to a literal string and just put the contents of that file or what would be that file into this string so we can set the theme to nord can set the style to numbers changes grid and we can set the paging to auto now, once again, this is a semi-inconvenient way of including a config file into home.nix, but if the config file is only a few lines, I do see it as a possible solution. Let's save that and rebuild our system. And now let's demonstrate those changes by running bat on the config file that we just created. So as you can see here, we have a Nord theme and the grid looks slightly different, but bat is now pointing to this config file that we just specified with home.nix. And once again, this is sort of an inception moment because we're using bat to demonstrate the config file that was just now declared and generated by home.nix. Let's move on to manage our qtile.files with home manager. Now, as I said, this .text method works for small config files like bat, but it's not practical for something larger, like our full qtile config.py. So instead, we're gonna manage qtile with git, and we're gonna tell home manager to point to our qtile config file. 
So in part one of this tutorial, we created our config.py dot file in a folder called nixos dot files. So for demonstrative purposes, let's reclone our nixos dot files into a new folder and tell home manager to point to that new folder. So we're going to clone our nixos dot files repository, but we're going to put that in a new folder called home manager dot files. So we can run tree on that new folder and we see the structure of it, and it includes qtiles config.py. All we need to do now is tell home manager to point to that file. Inside of our home.nix, let's add the line home.file.config slash qtile.source, and we'll set that equal to home tony home manager dot files qtile. And that will tell Home Manager to point to our freshly cloned dot .files directory when looking for a source for the Qtile config file. Let's save and quit that. But right now our Qtile config file is symlinked to our old nixos dot .files repo. So let's remove that symlink just by typing rm rf slash, just kidding, dot .config Qtile. So let's remove the entire Qtile symlink directory. And now we can run nixos rebuild switch. And now we can run ls -la on config And we can see that Qtile is now symlinked from our home manager files. All right, that's gonna be it for today's video. But I encourage you to go to mynixos.com and look through all the files and syntax to really configure all of your dot files in your own way. And home manager is a perfect tool for that. I will be covering flakes in part three of this tutorial. So look forward to that. So I will include a link to this home manager dot files repository in the description of the video, which is located below the subscribe button. And there you can simply copy my nixos config, change it to your liking and run it on your own system. Thanks so much for checking out the video. And if there's anything Linux related you would like me to go over, just drop a comment and I'll put it in the pipeline. And as always, I wouldn't be able to end a video without an obligatory NeoFetch.